So this is problem 23-23. We have a fairly common occurrence. We have three charges on uh, the arc of a circle. So let's say we have an x-axis here. We want to know the field at point P due to three charges. One charge is here on the axis with a charge of uh, minus 2 nanocoulombs. Minus 2 nanocoulombs. One charge is up here at plus 3 nanocoulombs. And then the other charge is down here at minus, at also plus 3 nanocoulombs. And they tell us that these are on the arc of a circle and that this separation is 4 centimeters. So therefore we also know that this separation is 4 centimeters and this one is also 4 centimeters. So going around like that. So the question is what is the field at point P? So this is a problem we can simplify a little bit by looking at, uh, thinking for a minute before we start doing calculations, thinking about the vectors of the fields formed at point P. So if we zoom in here just on point P, we know the field that we're going to get from the minus 2 nanocoulomb is what a positive test charge, the way to think about it is what was a positive test charge due at point P, it would go that way. So we know the field due to the negative 2 nanocoulomb charge would look like that. The field due to the plus 3 nanocoulomb charge would point that way, because a positive test charge would fly that way. And it's going to be, let's see, bigger or smaller, it's going to be bigger. It's the same distance, but it's uh, a larger charge. So it's going to be kind of like that. And this plus 3 nanocoulomb would create a field that would push that way. The same magnitude as that plus 3 nanocoulomb field. So the fields will kind of look like this. So you can look at this and say, okay, we uh, can see by inspection that the y components of these two will cancel. So if we look at that one, we break it into xy components like that. If we look at this one, it breaks into xy components like this. And these two are at the same angle, they're the same magnitude, so we know the y part is going to go away. So to get the field at P, we really just need the uh, field due to the minus 2 nanocoulomb charge, which is along this axis, and the sum of the horizontal components of the two uh, plus 3 nanocoulomb charges. So we can say then that E field at P will be equal to this contribution, which is minus 2 nanocoulombs, uh, minus 2 times 10 to the minus 9 coulombs over the distance squared. The distances are all 0.04 meters. And of course, coulombs constant is out there. Right? So Ke, uh, the charge over the distance squared, and we know that's along what we'll just call i hat. We'll say that's the x-axis. Call that i hat direction. And our negative sign is what's telling us it's in the negative x direction. So everything we need is there. The other two charges, we'll do them both together, because we know they'll have the same horizontal component. So plus 2 Ke um, times the charge of each one is 3 times 10 to the minus 9. The distance is 0.04 meters squared. Since these are all on a circle, they're all at uh, 4 centimeters. And finally, we need to get this component. We need the horizontal component. We know that this angle is 30 degrees. Uh, and they tell us that both these angles are 30 degrees. Well, if that angle is 30 degrees, then this angle is 30 degrees. And that one is also 30 degrees. So in each case, the horizontal component, we just have to multiply by the cosine of 30 degrees. The adjacent over the hypotenuse, or the cosine, is, is this component. So times the cosine of 30 degrees. And that is also in the i hat direction. Sorry, I'm around a board here. Tell the university I need a larger board in my office. So let's see, so we just got to start multiplying, uh, adding these up. So this is 9 times 10 to the 9. This is uh, minus 2 times 10 to the minus 9, so those cancel. So this is like minus 18, but then divide by 0.04 squared gives you a fairly large uh, field of minus 11,250 newtons per coulomb. And it's negative, so uh, I'll field this way. And then plus, here's 2 times 9 times 10 to the 9, times 3 times 10 to the minus 9. So let's see, that's 2 times 9 is 18, times 3 is 54. But again, we're going to divide by 0.04 squared, which makes it a large number. And we multiply that by the cosine of 30 degrees, which I think is the square root of 3 over 2. You do all that, and you get 29,000 
uh, to 28. So that is a positive force, or a positive field in the I hat direction, just like this diagram says it should be. This is also pretty cool. So we add these up to get the uh, total field, and we get it's close to, when you take it out, it's very close to 18,000. So this one's bigger than this one, then you subtract, and you get 18,000. So the E field of P is this. Back, probably chop. Back, battery died, sorry about that. So we've calculated the electric field, 18,000 newtons per coulomb to the right, and now the question is if there is a negative 5 nanocoulomb charge put at point B, what will the force be, I'm sorry, point P, what will the force be on that charge? And then we just do a direct application of basically the definition of the electric field. We say the force is always the charge times the electric field. So minus 5 times 10 to the minus 9 coulombs times 18,000 newtons per coulomb. It will be in the same direction um, as the field I have direction. So if you just multiply those out, 5 times 18 is usually something kind of like a 9. So you get minus 9 times 10 to the minus 5 newtons I hat direction. So again, the minus causes it to be negative in the I hat direction, which means the force is this way, and that's what you would expect. You would expect a negative charge, it feels that way, and the negative charge would feel a force this way. So this is the part B. Like B, 9 times 10 to the minus 5 newtons. That's it.